First and foremost is that Africa is suffering the most uh, from climate change. Nine out of the ten most vulnerable countries for climate change are in the world are in Africa. A continent that co only contributed 3% to global emissions is suffering today $7 to $15 billion a year in terms of losses, and that's going to rise to $40 billion by 2030. The fact is it doesn't really have the resources to adapt to that. If you look at how much resources has gone into climate finance globally, out of the about $643 billion that has gone to climate finance, Africa received only $30 billion when its needs are actually roughly $248 billion a year. Now, when it comes to the issue of adaptation, Africa has no choice but to adapt to what it didn't cause. But it needs resources to do that. Now, again, Africa only gets $11 billion when, for climate adaptation when its needs are actually 10 times more. And so basically what I was saying is that if we take a look at the global financial architecture, there are two parts of it we need to worry about. One is the global uh, financial architecture for climate. In other words, that should actually de deploy a lot more resources to support adaptation in Africa and greater global finance uh, for climate for, for Africa. So that's part of it. It's not the, the, the global climate financial architecture is under serving Africa's interests. Okay. The second one, of course, has to do with the overall global financial architecture, how we mobilize more resources for climate and for development. And that is why the, uh, the special drawing rights, uh, that's what I was talking about, it's one of the instruments, in fact, the most powerful instrument and the only instrument we really have on the table today that can do a, big, uh, a lot of things. But when the special drawing rights were issued, and I really applaud the IMF for, for that, um, $650 billion were issued. Africa received only $33 billion, about 4.5, almost 5% of that.